Hey, this is Pastor Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Good to have you here. If you're a subscriber, you're awesome. You're my VIP. If you're not a subscriber, please join our team. I put out more content, uh, new content every week on Thursdays or Fridays, one of the two. And oftentimes I give end times updates or share real life testimonies of miracles in people's lives. In my previous video, I referred to the uh, Olympic athlete and champion Samoan Biles dropping out of some competitions. A lot of people have their opinions about that. Um, some are calling her a quitter. Some are calling her brave. You know, despite what all people are saying about her, I am sure that her parents still gave her a hug and embraced her. I'm sure her parents and boyfriend still told her, we love you, we're proud of you. And to me, that's God's heart. That's the way God feels towards you and towards all of us. Whether you accomplish things or fall on your face, whether you do very well or drop out and withdraw yourself, either way, God is proud of you. I want you to know today that God is not grading you. God is not giving you or withholding from you love based upon your life performance. That's not how God is. God wants you to know right now that you're doing great. Keep it up. You're doing great. There's already enough in life to make you feel bad about yourself. There's already enough in life to bring you down. Don't put yourself down or beat yourself up. I mean, if you sin and do the wrong thing, by all means, confess it, but then let it go. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. God is proud of you. God's not going to embrace you on your good days and reject you when you've messed up and blown it and said the wrong thing or decided to drop out and, and not do something you had committed yourself to. God's rich in mercy and steadfast love. When you were in school and you tried something and failed, maybe a sport or a test, your mom or dad may have said, well, you get an E for effort. You know what? That's God's heart. It really is. In the Bible, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 22, you know a man brought his sick son to Jesus to be healed. The man was low in faith because he said to Jesus, If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus said, If you can, well, all things are possible for the one who believes. That's our Jesus, always full of faith. This man in the story, not so much. He said in verse 24 in Mark 9, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. Or in some versions, help me overcome my unbelief. Now Jesus healed that boy. But the point is that when the man told Jesus, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief, my lack of belief, my doubt, Jesus didn't criticize him or scold him or scrutinize him or judge him. He didn't say, that's not good enough. Your faith is not enough. Come back later when you have more faith. That's not the heart of Jesus. That's not the heart of your heavenly father. No judgment, no put down, no criticism. I mean, the man was already beaten down enough by his son's chronic condition, he didn't need any more. And Jesus didn't give him more religion or more put down or, or criticism. He gave him an E for effort. That's the heart of Jesus. He healed the man's boy. Now, to be fair, Jesus oftentimes said in the Gospels to his disciples, O ye of little faith, but he said that to his disciples. Why to them and not to this man in Mark chapter 9? Well, it's because the disciples had seen many amazing miracles. And most likely, 
the father in Mark chapter 9 had not. So the Bible says when much is given, much is, can you guess, required. The more miracles and supernatural blessings that you've received and seen, the more faith one should have. God knows your faith. God knows your heart. God is proud of you where you are. God knows your faith level may not be where somebody else's faith level is. And that's okay. In an Old Testament book named Zephaniah, Zephaniah was a minor, lesser known prophet in the Old Testament. In Zephaniah chapter 3, he described the horrible conditions in the city of Jerusalem. I mean, you think the streets of Chicago or St. Louis or, or L.A. are bad. Jerusalem was just as bad in the days of Zephaniah. In chapter 3, verse 1, he said, What sorrow awaits rebellious, polluted Jerusalem? The city of violence and crime. He said in verses 2 and 3 and 4 that Jerusalem's leaders, judges, priests, and prophets were all corrupt. Arrogant liars, he called them. In it for the money. And the people of Jerusalem were just as bad. They were corrupt. So God described judgment coming upon Jerusalem. But the purpose of judgment is not simply to inflict pain and, and punishment and sorrow. It's to correct people, to correct behavior, to change their hearts and bring them back to God. Later on in that same chapter, Zephaniah said in verse 15 that the Lord will remove his hand of judgment. And judgment in this case means correction. And it says, at last your troubles will be over. And you will never again fear disaster. God is saying that to your heart right now. In verse 16, on that day the announcement to Jerusalem will be, cheer up, don't be afraid, or in the King James, fear not. For the Lord your God is living among you. God is a mighty Savior. Check this out. God will take delight in you with gladness. Do you know that that's true for you? Do you know that God actually takes delight in you with gladness? If you take delight in somebody, it means you like them. You enjoy being around them. When they call your, your phone and you grab your cell phone and you see their caller ID, you're excited, you're happy, you take that call. When somebody you enjoy being around texts you, emails you, comes and sees you, you're glad, you're happy, you smile, right? That's how God is towards you. God delights in you. He enjoys you. He likes you. You put a smile on God's face. If God said that about horrible, corrupt Jerusalem, he's saying it about you too. He's saying it about you. God will take delight in you with gladness. Verse 17, watch this. With his love, he will calm all your fears. God will rejoice over you with joyful songs. The Hebrew word in that passage for rejoice means to leap and dance. This is saying that God delights in you. He leaps and dances over you, sings joyful songs over you. It's kind of hard to imagine God dancing and leaping and singing songs over you. Imagine children in their bed, siblings in the same room. They're being ornery. They're being restless. They can't fall asleep. They're being obnoxious. Mom comes in and says, shh, bedtime. But before she leaves, mom sings her children a lullaby, a bedtime song. She sings to them 
or she reads them a book, talks to them, hopefully prays over them, and in a few short minutes, they're asleep. She calmed them, calmed their fears of the dark with her love. She delighted in them with, with gladness and joyful songs, a bedtime lullaby. Does that make sense? That's how God is for you. With his love, he will calm all your fears. No matter how bad the people of Jerusalem got, God never abandoned them. And God will never abandon you. Whether you do well or mess up, whether you go for it in life or drop out and withdraw, whether you fly or fold, whether you are proud of your behavior or whether you embarrass yourself by doing something or saying something that you shouldn't have, you're still God's child. He's still your father. He's still with you. The Lord will rejoice over you. You make God smile. You make God laugh. God's proud of you. And God will take delight in you. And he will calm all your fears with his love. Guaranteed. Thank you for watching. If you're not one of my awesome subscribers, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button, like this video. If you have comments or feedback or prayer requests, leave them down below in the comment section. I want to hear from you, my awesome subscribers and watchers. Thank you for watching. Take care.